What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here as always on the Cost of D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams. It is Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Sorry for the delay, but today we're going to be taking a look at the film that was supposed to go up yesterday Dead Man on Campus, starring Tom Everett Scott, Mark Paul Gossler, Poppy Montgomery. Lachlan Monroe, Corey Page, Allison Hannigan, Jason Siegel, and Linda Cardellini. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. As I send the introduction, it's Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Sorry for the delay. Sorry I didn't get a video up yesterday. I've just kind of been down, if you will. I just haven't had the energy and the drive to get things going. But I said, enough is enough. I got to sit down here. I got to handle things. I got to give you, my loyal viewers, the content that you have become accustomed to. So here we are today to take a look at Dead Man on Campus. And as our movie opens, Josh gets into college on a scholarship and Cooper is assigned as his roommate. Now, Cooper does very little work and instead spends all of his time partying as he constantly fails his courses. However, his father continues to pay his tuition. The normally studious Josh is led astray by Cooper's lifestyle and spends the first half of his first year partying instead of studying and consequently fails all of his midterm exams. Now, to his horror, Josh learns that a condition of his scholarship is passing marks every year, and that with his poor midterm scores, he will need an A++++ in all of his courses, or he will lose his scholarship. Meanwhile, Cooper's father finally realizes that Cooper is not trying to pass his courses at all and he threatens to pull funding if he does not get a passing mark, leaving him in a very similar position as Josh. Cooper and Josh then find out about an obscure academic rule that states that if a student's roommate commits suicide, then all the roommates get perfect marks for the year, regardless of any previous academic standing. As a result of this new information, they set out to find roommates who are likely to commit suicide. However, they soon realize that their first potential roommate, Cliff O'Malley, is more likely to get himself and anyone with him killed or arrested. So they jump out of his moving car while he is being chased by the police. Next, they try Buckley Shrank a computer geek who thinks that Bill Gates wants his brain. After they move him in, they try to push him over the edge. First, Cooper poses as a suicide hotline volunteer, and when Buckley calls, he tells him that he is Bill Gates and that he does, in fact, want his brain. Cooper then buys items that could be used for a suicide but as he and Josh are trying to plant them around the house, Buckley discovers them and flees, thinking that the conspiracy is real and that they are trying to kill him. Finally, Josh and Cooper move in with Matt Noonan, a moody rock musician. Later on, Cooper catches him singing show tunes and learns that he was voted Mr. Happy in high school, leading them to believe that he is only pretending to be depressed in order to impress girls and make a name for himself in music. Facing the loss of his scholarship, Josh stands on the edge of a bridge, about to commit suicide himself. Cooper tells Josh that he is not a failure, and he talks him down. When Josh comes down from the bridge, he reveals to Cooper that he was faking his suicide attempt so that the school wouldn't fail him and that Cooper 
would look like a hero to his father. We then hear Josh narrating that he was given one additional semester to improve his grades, in which he did, and saved his scholarship, and that Cooper became a more serious student, but he did work summers cleaning toilets for his father's business in order to learn how to eventually take over the business as our movie comes to its close. I remember seeing trailers for this when it was first coming out back in the late 90s and thinking, this seems like a pretty goofy premise. I I don't know. Don't get me wrong, it had a couple actors that I really enjoyed at the time. Tom Everett Scott, of course, I knew from the movie That Thing You Do with The Wonders and Tom Hanks and kind of that whole 60s pop band experience. I have reviewed that in the past. If you've missed my review for that, check out the link up here. But I knew him from That Thing You Do. He played Guy, the drummer, affectionately referred to as Shades. And he was good in that. So I was high on him at the time. I definitely thought that he had a career coming. Clearly he didn't because he hasn't done a whole lot of notes since then. But I digress. And then the other half of the cast, Mark Paul Gossler, I mean, I grew up on Saved by the Bell. And he's very much a Zach Morris-esque character in this. You know, I watched Good Morning Miss Bliss when they were in junior high. I watched the OG Saved by the Bell. I watched Saved by the Bell the college years. I watched the movies that they did. Wedding Las Vegas and the, the Hawaiian vacation. You know, I loved me some Saved by the Bell. So here you've got Guy from That Thing You Do and Zach Morris. And I didn't see it in theaters because it just looked so goofy at the time. Then the years progress and other people begin to make a name for themselves. And then you realize Allison Hannigan is in this. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, American Pie. You've got Linda Cardellini in this. Scooby-Doo, you know, the MCU, she's Hawkeye's wife. Freaks and Geeks. You've also got Jason Siegel. Again, Freaks and Geeks. The Muppets, you know. So, so now the years have progressed, and now there's even more people in this movie that you know. So it's like, okay, let's give this a try. We're doing school movies. Let's, let's watch this. It was decent. It wasn't great. It wasn't horrible. It, if I was grading it, I would probably give it a C. It was average. It was, it was good, though. It definitely had a different premise where this rule exists that if your roommates kill themselves, you get a good grade. Okay. So how do we make this work now in the confines of storytelling? And they did. And I commend them for that. You know, it wasn't your traditional animal house, fast times at Ridgemont High, American Pie type of teen comedy. There was there was something different going on here. There was a little something interesting. Yeah, it very much had some of those other movies elements. You know, you could almost call it a stoner film, but just just that unique plot device really intrigued me because how are they going to pull this off? And then in the end, they don't. Nobody commits suicide, but because Tom Everett Scott's Josh is about to and is on that bridge and Cooper can talk him down, they at least get a semester reprieve. So I thought that was a nice little compromise to the insanity of the plot point. Again, when it comes to my rating, I don't do letter grades. So middle of the road, a C would be three stars. 
out of five. What do you guys think of Dead Men on Campus? Those of you that have seen it, let me know. If you're watching the premiere, leave your thoughts and comments over here. If you're watching on demand later in the day, leave your thoughts and comments down here. Let's have that conversation, that discussion, that debate, that interaction that I'm always asking you guys for in the comments below. And make sure you guys stay tuned in at the top of the hour right here to the Casa D18 Studios channel as we once again open up the doors for Stat Boy Sports Bar featuring Dory Lou. The food is hot, the beer is ice cold, and the seats are warm, so pull yourself up a bar stool and engage in some professional sports conversation with your knowledgeable barkeeps, Stat Boy Mike and Stat Girl Dory Lou. And then tomorrow, right back here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, it'll be another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews as we get back on track and we discuss the school for good and evil. This was a Netflix original film that came out last year starring Sophia Ann Caruso, Sophia Wiley, Kit Young, Lawrence Fishburne, Michelle Yeoh, Rob Delaney, Rachel Bloom, Kate Blanchett, and Charlize Theron. You don't want to miss out on any of that content right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel. We've got Stat Boy Sports Bar featuring Dory Lou, The School for Good and Evil, and so much more coming up again. You don't want to miss anything, so make sure you smash that like button, make sure you subscribe, make sure that notification bell is turned on so you don't miss out any time a video drops right here on the Casa D18 Studios channel or any time we go live, as is the case with Stat Boy Sports Bar, Open Mic Night, pay-per-view ple watch long coverage etc share these videos with your family friends loved ones co-workers movie fanatics cinephiles in your life fans of tom everett scott fans of mark paul gossler fans of linda cardellini fans of jason siegel anybody you can think of that would enjoy this content in this video share it with them as it's the only way we're going to keep my visibility up in youtube's algorithms now that we are in fact a monetized channel right here on the platform Thank you once again to everybody out there who joined me and tuned in today. It means so much more to me than you guys will ever know. And I will see you guys next time. Now, preview time. So let's take a look at what's coming your way.